In this video, we'll show you some of the most important factors when selecting a micron mesh for your filtration application. Many customers start with a desired micron retention requirement in mind and erroneously assume that there's only one mesh configuration to meet it. What they don't often realize is that there may be at least five or six common mesh types that can meet their retention requirements. In fact, by controlling parameters such as wire count, wire diameter, and weave type, several different types of meshes can be produced to achieve the same retention target. So the question is, what mesh should you choose? For example, let's consider a few different types of meshes that can provide an approximately 60 nominal micron retention. Just to help you visualize 60 microns, what we're looking for is a mesh fine enough to filter out particles just smaller than the width of a human hair. This chart shows several types of weaves that can meet our 60 micron filtration requirement. The mesh count refers to the number of wires per inch in either direction. Where there are two numbers, the first refers to the count of wires running lengthwise through the coil, also known as the warp wires. The second number refers to the count of wires used to fill across the weave, often referred to as the fill or shoot wires. Each weave provides different characteristics suitable for different functions and applications. Each weave also has a different cost per square foot, determined by the complexity and number of wires. The most common weave pattern, known as a plane or square weave, is what most people think about when discussing wire mesh. Wires in each direction are woven together into a square pattern, much like a very fine bug screen. You will often see these types of weaves listed off the shelf as mill grade, market grade, or bolting cloth. Square weaves are common and easy to produce, and controlling the filtration capabilities of a square weave is as simple as altering the wire diameter and wire count of the pattern. As the number of wires in the weaves increases, the open area between wires decreases, improving the filtration capability of the mesh. However, for more wires to fit into the weave, the wires used need to be thinner. Not only does this require additional processing and cost, the use of smaller wires also reduces the overall strength of the mesh. As such, very fine square meshes tend to be too fragile for most filtration applications. This brings us to the category of weaves known as Dutch weaves. Rather than using identical wire counts and diameters in both directions, Dutch weaves use combinations of thick and thin wires to form a tighter weave. This unbalanced wire configuration allows for a variety of complex patterns to be used that can increase density and filtration capabilities while also controlling for mechanical strength. The most basic of these patterns is the plain Dutch weave. With this pattern, thin fill wires are woven over and under each warp wire, alternating each row. This creates a very sturdy mesh with a tight pattern that excels at filtration and holds up well to high pressures, as well as being easy to clean. For additional strength along the length of the coil, the warp wires in a plain Dutch weave can also be paired to form what is called a double warp Dutch weave. The pairing of these wires increases overall durability and strength, while also slightly altering the geometry enough to see minor improvements to flow and retention characteristics. However, this weave may be more difficult to process due to the use of thinner wires and the reduced flexibility of the pattern. Alternatively, you could increase the count of the fill wires in your Dutch weave by utilizing a pattern known as a Dutch twill. With this pattern, the fill wires are woven through every other warp wire, repeating this in a staggered fashion across the weave. This results in a very dense weave with increased surface area and high filtration accuracy. However, at finer micron retention ratings, this complex pattern requires thinner wires compared to an equivalently rated plain Dutch weave. As such, gains in filtration accuracy often come with the trade-off of reduced strength and durability, as the thin wires can potentially fray and fail under high pressure. These weaves also tend to be very expensive due to the sheer number of wires used. Lastly, we have the so-called reverse versions of both the plain Dutch and Dutch twill weaves. With most Dutch weaves, the warp wires tend to be thicker than the fill wires. With the reverse patterns, the fill wires are thicker than the warp wires, essentially reversing the pattern of the weave. These reversed orientations further alter the filtration and strength characteristics of their respective weaves. For example, the reverse plain Dutch weave is thicker and stronger than a regular plain Dutch weave and can withstand very high differential pressures. These weaves are good for long, narrow profiles that coil lengthwise, but they can resist the bending over their width. The reverse Dutch twill is easier to process and has better particle retention than a regular Dutch twill, but it doesn't hold up the pressure nearly as well. It is also not a commonly stocked item, with long lead times and only available as a custom order. It also costs the most of all the weaves. Each of these weave patterns feature different strengths and advantages. Selecting the right mesh for your application may come down to design questions as to the sort of pressures you anticipate in your system and your desired flow rates. 
By working with our wire mesh experts, we can determine and recommend the ideal mesh pattern for your filtration application. But it's more than just choosing a weave pattern that fits your desired micron rating. We also need to determine how the mesh is going to be processed and assembled into your product. You will be asked questions like, how you intend to process the mesh? Will it need to be formed, punched, or shaped? Will it be utilized as a flat sheet or need to be rolled, pleated, or possibly deep drawn? And how will the mesh be mated to your assembly? Will the edges need to be welded, crimped, glued, hemmed, or overmolded with plastic? For example, some of the more robust Dutch weaves are too stiff for pleating, whereas others can be too thin for welding. All of these types of questions factor into the decision of which type of 60 micron mesh is recommended for your application. Lastly, we of course need to consider the cost of the mesh itself. Simply put, the more metal used in a mesh, the more expensive it will be. So we can look at things like whether the same retention can be achieved by using a different weave that uses less material. Can your application be met using a common mesh available in stock, or will it need to be special ordered? In some cases, you may find a mesh that will offer 1% improvement in flow rate, but if it's not an off-the-shelf item, it may cost significantly more. Talking to one of our wire mesh experts about your micron mesh filtration needs will not only help you avoid common costly pitfalls, it will help you get the mesh that is optimal for the job instead of just sufficient. At Gerard Daniel, we've been sourcing, weaving, and distributing wire mesh for 70 years and stock the largest range of inventory in North America. Our application engineers use their deep expertise in woven mesh and components to develop the most effective solutions, collaborating with your design, development, and production teams to ensure the lowest cost to manufacture. Please reach out to our dedicated team via our website if you would like to learn more about our capabilities. Thanks for watching.